So Liverpool have won the first trophy of the season. If you count the Community Shield as a trophy, I think I probably do, it doesn't matter. What we did see was very interesting in this game is the battle of two strikers in Darwin Nunez and Erling Holland. So Man City have not had a player like this basically ever. Liverpool haven't had a striker like this guy for a long time. This guy is like a crazy train who runs through the middle of you. This guy is like a monster. He's, just a, he's, a, he's so large <laughs> and really quick and his movement is incredible. Both of them played really well in this game even though Holland didn't score and Nunez did. But let's look at the difference that these players make to their teams. We saw it in this uh, Community Shield at Liverpool 1, obviously. Now, Nunez didn't even start. It was our old friend, Bobby Firmino, who doesn't play like a normal number nine would. He likes to drop deeper. So where what you have with Liverpool is a front three, which essentially means that the, the wide forwards are the stars. They're not wingers or inverted wingers. They're inside forwards, basically. These two are the ones who are going to get the goals and do all the action. So where Salah and Diaz like to operate in these sorts of areas, these half spaces like that, and you had Manny used to do it before for, for uh, Liverpool. Firmino tends to operate in these sorts of areas here. This is where he goes. What Nunes does is he likes to charge into these areas. That's where he wants to be. He wants to just come flying in, get to that bit there, and he carries the ball, runs in behind a high line. The new Man City would have that. That's what he did when he came on. Firmino is excellent throughout. He leads the press, show where the ball's gonna go so Liverpool can be super aggressive, push up the pitch, and then try and win it back. When Firmino went off, on came Nunez, a completely different kind of threat. Whereas Firmino's more in the background, trying to pull some strings from those little deeper areas. Nunez, you cannot miss him. He is going through you like this. And you saw it when the first involvements. Um, someone, I can't remember who, plays a ball over the top, bends his runs so he's on side. The ball has to come at the right time to get him in. When he does, he's quick, took a bit of a heavy first touch, took himself wide of Edison. Edison took him down, would have been a penalty had he been on side. But this is one another difference you get with Liverpool now. So we're in the past, so you had Thiago in these sorts of situations, right? If he wants to play in Diaz and Salah, he's got to play this sort of ball wide. You've got to play these sorts of passes that go in behind slightly wide angle. Now with Nunez, you can go straight through the middle because Firmino would drop deep and then he would try and play the same sort of ball from a higher position like this rather than shoot. Nunez is going to shoot because Thiago can play this straight ball now or, you know, bend it obviously at times. Nunez is going to run inside to get here. His second involvement, he ends up chipping the ball into Ederson's face from close range because he's running in behind these high lines. It makes him so much more dangerous uh, against teams like Man City. They've got options now. They can play the false nine of Firmino. They can play Nunez like this. And we saw his goal later on, a proper striker's poacher's goal. Carvalho came on for his debut on the left wing, replacing Diaz. But Carvalho is more of a 10. When he played for Fulham, he's more of a 10. He likes to play in central areas, a bit like Firmino. Salah has the ball here. Carvalho has moved into this area here. Nunez recognises that that's going to upset the shape. You want to have diamonds or you want to create a bit of depth between you, not all be on the same line. That's no use. So he drops deep. Carvalho is now the focus of the defender's attentions. Very useful. Robertson, as ever, is just bombing on like this constantly. In this situation, the attacking phase, Salah's here. He sees Robertson making the run to the back post. He's going to make a curved ball over here. The team naturally falls back to defend. Carvalho tries to operate here. But what's happened is that they've sort of left, they've just ignored that Nunez is floating in from the back. So while they're over here dealing with this, the ball comes in. Nunez has just floated in. Floats between Aki and Diaz, so, so slack, like the really poor defending from Diaz especially, not following his man, switching off. Nunes floats in, diving header, near post, goal. That's his first goal for Liverpool. Um, he was very happy about it, and so were the Liverpool fans, because they could clearly signed um, an, an agent of chaos. He just brings absolute mayhem to the game when he comes into it. So it'll be interesting to see how Klopp decides to use him going forward and what he wants to do with him, how often he plays. It could be every single week, it could be just from time to time. We don't know, but let's have a look now at what Holland did for Man City and why I think he had a better game than some people seem to think he did. So, like um, Man City, Liverpool are playing a very high defensive line. Man City knew that would be the case. So you've got Man City in a 4-3-3, Rodri is the pivot with Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne, Holland, Mahrez, Grootless around here, right? Now in the past, what they were doing with two false nines was playing like a 4-4-2. So De Bruyne would be up here level with someone like Gabriel Jesus or Phil Foden. And when they're pressing, it looks more like a 4-2-2-2, like a something like this. So that's what they're trying to do when they're pressing, is to lead the ball wide so then they can step up, be super aggressive, not leave any space for anyone to play out of. And that's what they do to win the ball back. 
in possession, what would then happen is that Grealish would swap with someone like Holland out wide, or then they'd rotate here, and maybe Bernardo Silva would rotate. So you never know who's going to be where and when, so it's very hard to keep track of as a defender. You don't even know if they have positions. You don't know what their shape is, because it just constantly moves. Um, and that really worked for them, as you can see from them winning the league last season. But Holland is very much someone who's going to stay in the width of the six-yard box. That's what he's going to do always. He's not going wide whatsoever. Again, like Nunez, his movement's really good. He likes to make these bendy runs. It's the thing you're kind of taught about. So you do it, so you start running here and down the way, so that by the time you start going like that, you're at full speed, you accelerate. It takes time. You can't suddenly run at 100 miles an hour. No one can run at 100 miles an hour, but you don't suddenly spring to full speed. You've got to time it. And this is what he constantly does. What we saw time and time and again from Man City in this game is they were not playing the pass early enough. So you have De Bruyne here, and you have Holland making this run. The whole point of sending a player like Holland is that that ball comes in over the top, so he goes in behind and beats the defender to it because he's not going to like Van Dijk's not going to beat Holland in a, in a race there. And that's what you want to do. But City are so used to keeping possession because if you keep possession, you can make sure your teammates can get into the right shape. So Mares can be here. If you hold the ball a bit longer, it gives time for Walker to make the overlap, which means that Mares can come in here, which means Holland can be here. Then you've got like your front five. You can dictate things and you have the shape that your manager has orchestrated so you can control the game the way you want. But the whole point of having Holland is that De Bruyne comes in here and it's a first time ball. It's not a short pass or trying to keep possession or look for a ball out wide. It's meant to go through the middle. It's a different kind of style that they want to play. They've been relying often on getting the ball into the final third. They've been wide areas and that's what they end up creating. And they play the sort of ball where rather than play it into the nine in the middle here, they cut it back or they'll get here even closer to the goal and they'll cut it back to someone who's deeper. So the number nine, whether Foden or De Bruyne, whoever's playing at that time, will be here. But the real danger is someone running in from behind. And that's why they get so many goals of people like De Bruyne from these sorts of situations. But with Holland, they weren't playing that ball early enough. So Holland wasn't getting the chances. He did get a couple of chances, which he missed, but they were, you know, that happens. Sometimes this is not your day. Um, what we did see from Holland uh, is that he's more unable of leading the press and the defenders were clearly very scared of him. He absolutely bodied uh, Robertson out of the way. One thing I noticed he did quite a lot was he hid sort of behind the back of the centre back. So he'd wait and so he's between like Robertson and Holland or something like that, hoping that like Diaz and Ake at the other end of the pitch, they'd switch off and not follow him. But one other player came on, I thought, had a real massive impact in this game and that is Alvarez. So he came on for Mares in the right wing. Then Phil Foden came on for Grealish, who was not very good in this game, playing far too many safe passes sideways, not attacking and going the way he needs to. And you saw the difference when Foden came on especially, just attacking, attacking, attacking. It's what you want. Alvarez was playing on the wide right, but also he was playing as like a second striker. So whereas Holland is like a scary monster that you can definitely always see, Alvarez is like a ghost striker who floats in behind and you don't know he's there because he's haunting you with his skill. But what happened then was Bernardo Silva went out wide right. He was excellent when he moved out to that sort of position here. You know, De Bruyne in these sorts of situations trying to dictate play. So there's a goal that Alvarez scores and it looks a little bit like this. So you have Foden on the wide left, you have Holland obviously taking out the defender's attentions because they know he's there, you can't miss him. Alvarez is floating about because he's a ghost. De Bruyne is here, and De Bru uh, Bernardo Silva's out here. Now, the thing with Holland being such a scary little player to deal with is that here, when he's making this run, Van Dijk and Matip know that's going to happen, so they expect this ball to come in. So their focus is now on this sort of pass, because they think that's what Holland's going to do. The obvious ball is going to be that. That's what they're worried about. That means they sort of switched off. Even Adson Arnold will join in looking at that, because that's the obvious danger. And that means Foden is then the free guy, and you can attack this space at the back post. Not looking, because they switch off. Well, they're not switched off. They're very switched on and focused only on this. So De Bruyne, as ever, plays a brilliant ball into this sort of area here. Foden arrives. He shoots. There's a bit of a stramash in the area and Alvarez just follows up like a ghost and finishes that in the back of the net. There it goes, that's a goal for City. The scores are level. Um, Alvarez was then often on the left, on the right, sometimes as a front two. So City are still doing their front two thing they've done last season, but they're doing it in a different sort of way, getting more players forward. But rather than having players like Mares or the wide forwards who used to be in wide areas, they've got people who are used to being penalty box poachers. Alvarez can play on any side. I think he's going to be one of the players to really watch the season when he gets game time because he's, I think he's quite special. So that is the difference that Holland and Nunes made in this game. Nunes won the game for Liverpool. Liverpool dominated the first half. Man City made some changes, notably Silver going out wide right here and Foden out here, which got them back into it. But poor defending from Aki and Diaz, switching off for this guy. Who didn't recognise what a threat he is. 
very good player. Uh, and Bernardo Silva was really good. He was really, really good. Forget how good this guy is. If he played for Barcelona or Real Madrid, you'd be like, this guy's amazing. He's really good. That's my analysis. Bernardo Silva's really good. Holland is going to be fantastic. He's making all the right runs, not getting the balls in yet. Once they start making these early passes, Holland will score a million goals. And like, that he missed a one-on-one -on -one here. Like, he missed this tap in here. That just happens sometimes. He'll score loads this season. That's the Community Shield. Have a nice time. Please subscribe. Goodbye. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is where the Ralph Rangnick to Manchester United story broke, where a team of journalists have provided unrivaled coverage of Newcastle United's new ownership and where dedicated writers cover every Premier League team, no matter their place in the table. And you can try it free now for 30 days.